halfway through the year at this point and uh, that's kind of scary but that also means that we've already got a ton of Android devices out on the market especially mid-range Android devices and you know it can be kind of daunting I guess to have to choose one uh, and kind of stick with it for another two years maybe just because there's so many options and within those options there are even more options and more variants of each model so yeah it can be like a bit daunting to choose a mid-range device especially if you're a bit on a budget and you kind of want to squeeze out as much value as you can from your purchase but in my opinion I've tested quite a few uh, as you can see from my channel uh, I did test quite a few uh, mid-range devices from this year and I think I've come to a conclusion uh, which is one particular device which I think it's you know the best value out of all of them and it's not even a 2022 mid-range device it's actually as you can probably tell it's the Poco F3 from last year and you know, there's a lot of reasons why I think this is a good device and you know, especially now that it's a bit cheaper but yeah, I think this is actually a really good purchase even in June 2022 When the Poco F3 first released in March 2021 uh, the base 6128GB variant uh, cost 400 USD which is in of itself a really good deal already but a year later right now uh, you can actually get it for much cheaper mine personally is the spec out 8256GB variant and I only got it for 245 USD which is an extremely good deal and the thing is I actually got it from the official Poco store here in Malaysia so I did have some kind of like vouchers and coupons on top of that but uh, more than likely you'll be able to find these uh, brand new Poco F3s from third party vendors and stuff and they're going to be costing around the 250 to $300 range which I think is still a really good deal compared to a lot of the other mid-range devices in 2022 uh, essentially the discounts put this uh, on par in terms of pricing with something like the Poco X4 Pro 5G and the Honor Magic 4 Lite slash uh, Honor X9 5G, the ones which I recently reviewed and uh, obviously spoiler, uh, you know, this is uh, way better than those two devices out there so yeah, you know, if you can find this on a good deal, uh, definitely consider it, uh, I would say um, you definitely try to aim for somewhere between 250 to 300 USD I think that's a really good uh, price range Okay, so Arguably the most attractive feature of the Poco F3 and the reason why uh, I think this device is still an extremely good purchase in 2022 is the fact that it uses a Snapdragon 870 processor and that's pretty much a, you know, a boosted 855 plus but despite this processor being uh, pretty much like 2 years old it's still a lot better than the offerings we have in 2022 I mean in terms of mid-range uh, processors and stuff Obviously, like I said before, uh, you know, in terms of pricing, this pretty much is in the same uh, you know, like league as something like the Poco X4 Pro 5G or the Realme 9 Pro Plus. And those devices over there, they use uh, processors like the Dimensity 920, Snapdragon 695. And you know, obviously those are newer processors uh, meant for 2022. But you know, this one over here, despite being a two-year processor, the 870 is leagues better than those two. Uh, processors over there and many others and you know it's very apparent in things like gaming especially uh, you know gaming performance on this is still really good um, I don't have any footage because usually I, I like to play ranked uh, games and it's a bit hard to record footage and also focus on winning so you know, just take my word for it that gaming performance on this is really good and of course needless to say day-to-day uh, -day tasks like swiping around the UI and stuff it's smooth uh, a lot less uh, stutters and lags compared to something with like a Snapdragon 695 or a Dimensity 920 and on top of that, uh, there's also been leaks and rumours that reveal that the successor to this, the Poco F4 5G is allegedly going to be using the same exact Snapdragon 870 uh, although it's going to be costing a bit more due to some upgrades in areas like the camera and RAM but yeah, um, you know, if it's going to be using the, the same Snapdragon 870, I think uh, you're better off getting this one over here because performance wise it's going to be roughly the same and this is going to be costing a lot cheaper than the 
upcoming POCO F4 5G. So of course there's a lot of other good things for this device. Uh, if you didn't really know, it has a nice, really good actually 120Hz OLED display. And it also gets really bright uh, compared to a lot of the other devices which are tested out. Uh, this one over here in particular gets really bright uh, even in direct sunlight. I have no issues uh, viewing the content on screen. Uh, there's also some really good uh, stereo speakers. You uh, know, really rich sound and stuff. Really impressed. I mean, at this price point, uh, you can get it again you know, within the 250 to 300 dollar range. I think that's a really good deal for the quality of the display and speakers you get. So in terms of battery, uh, you're getting a 4,500 milliamp battery, which you know it isn't the biggest. Uh, a lot of devices in this price range tend to get 5,000 milliamp batteries, but I think it's respectable. I haven't really had much issue with it. Although one downside with this device, I guess, is the charging speeds is arguably slower than a lot of other competitors. It's only capped at 33 watts, which I think for most people it should be enough. But you know, if you're someone who's always on the go and having to rush and stuff, uh, 33 watts might be a bit slow in 2022. But again, you know, it's uh, what you lose in charging speeds, you gain in other aspects like having a really good processor, really good display and of course really good speakers so I think it's a fair trade-off to try to achieve this uh, lower price range also another really good thing about this uh, display is the fact that it actually has an actual always-on display uh, unlike some other devices which you know has an always-on display that kind of times out after like 15 seconds this one actually stays on so that's really good you know if you're on a budget obviously and you want a device with an always-on display I know some people really like that you know having it as like a bedside clock so this is a really good option so yeah you know an actual always on display uh, definitely really impressed with that in terms of cameras you're going to be getting a triple camera setup uh, getting a 48 megapixel main wide camera an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera and a tertiary 5 megapixel macro camera so uh, you know i would say you know, they're not the best cameras around but um, you know given the price i think they're adequate it's reasonable and the images I've gotten out of them are decent and I think if all you're doing is just posting them on you know like Instagram, Facebook or social media in general I don't think you would have any issues with them unless you, you know, kind of like throw them out on a big display which you know I think it's unlikely you're going to be doing that but yeah you know cameras are adequate you know I don't really have much complaints about that um, the good thing about the cameras though is uh, I have to say is that it's capable of 4K video recording which a lot of devices in this price range in 2022 are unable to do because of the Snapdragon 695 so that's definitely a plus for this the fact that you can record 4k video so if you're looking for a device that can record 4k video and you're not keen on spending too much for like a upper tier mid-ranger or like a you know flagship device this one over here is capable of 4k video recording so yeah you'll definitely keep that in mind also another good thing with the cameras here is the fact that uh, you get some really fun modes which are not available on some of the newer Xiaomi and Poco devices. Uh, most notably you get the clone photo and video which is honestly really fun and it's, you know it's not a gimmick it's actually something that you can use uh, you know, at a party or something and you can really impress people with it. Put my hands a yens, put my bands a bands, put my ten a ten, or put my spend a spend. Yeah, so it's really fun to have that and you know it's a shame that the newer Xiaomi and Poco devices don't have that. I think it's mainly due to the fact that the Snapdragon 695 and some of the newer processors are not able to kind of keep up with the processing and all that. But yeah, this one over here, the Snapdragon 870 is able to do that. So you know, it adds even more value to this device compared to the newer Poco devices. Some people are not like huge fans of Mi UI. Uh, you know, like some people find it too cluttered and stuff. I know personally, I, I'm okay with it. Uh, but the good thing with the Poco F3 is the fact that, you know, obviously it's been out for more than a year. You're going to be able to find a lot of stable custom ROMs available. And you can kind of switch out. You can, you know, install something like the Pixel Experience on this, uh, Arrow OS. There's plenty of custom ROMs. Uh, the community is really good as well. So, you know, if you don't like MIUI, you can just get this and install a custom ROM. And, you know, it's going to be still a really good device. 
Uh, although on the subject of MIUI, I actually recently received the MIUI 13 and I also, uh, you, know, you know, it also has Android 12. It's a bit late, but you know, better than never, I guess. Also, another thing is the uh, unboxing experience for this. It's also really good for the price. Uh, you pretty much get a clear, transparent case in the box. You get a pre-installed screen protector. You get a charger as well, a charger and charging cable, obviously a SIM tool. And the best part is you get a 3.5 USB-C adapter, which is it was really rare these days to actually find that. Uh, I mean, granted, this is actually a 2021 device, but still, you know, that's a really nice bonus. You know, if you're someone who doesn't plan to get um, wireless earbuds and you're kind of sticking with just wired earbuds, uh, it's nice to know you have that you know included in the box. So yeah, you know, unboxing experience is really really good. Uh, better than even some of the flagships out there right now. So yeah, uh, no, that's pretty much it for the video. I think the Poco F3 is an extremely good value even in June 2022, uh, right when this video is being recorded. And I think even the upcoming months, it's still going to be a really good value, especially if you can, again, you know, find it within the 250 to 300 USD price range. I think that's reasonable. If you can get it for even lower, that's even better. But yeah, you know, it's a really good device and I still highly, highly recommend it. Uh, you know, in comparison to a lot of the newer mid-range devices, which I think have compromised a bit too much. And you know, I think Poco, they did a really good job with this. Uh, you know, they actually made this device a bit too good. Uh, to the point where it's kind of, you know, competing with even their newer Poco devices. and pretty much cannibalizing sales I guess in some way so yeah I you know the Poco F3 is a really good device and I highly highly recommend this even in June 2022 yeah so that's it for the video uh, and I hope you guys did enjoy it it's a bit different you know it's, I'm pretty much revisiting an old device but yeah I you know sometimes I guess it's good to do that as well especially if they are of really good value like this one over here so yeah I you know, hope you guys did enjoy the video make sure to leave a like if you did and also do let me know in the comments if you already have a Poco F3 or you're planning to actually get one right now after watching this video and yeah I know until then uh, take care and I'll see you guys next time bye